Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Fallout 76 for another trip to the Purveyor. Today, we're going to spend a thousand script on three star legendary weapons, as we often do. We'll talk about what makes them good, what makes them bad, what makes them somewhere in between. Remember, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, follow me on Twitter. There's always a lot more to come on the channel. But with that out of the way, let's get going. All right, and our first roll of the day is an Aristocrat's Handmade with limb damage and 250 damage resistance while reloading. So I am a pretty big fan of the Aristocrat's effect. I think it's a really good option if you're looking for something that's going to boost your damage at full health. Once you are a higher level player or at least a player that's been around for a while, the idea of holding 29,000 caps or more is not that hard to do. So to do that and get a 50% damage increase, well, that's a pretty solid trade-off if you ask me. Extra limb damage on a weapon like this, it's not a bad thing to have and, and you might get a little bit of mileage out of it out at, at some big boss fights, but beyond that, it's not really going to do anything for you. If you've got a good commando build, uh, you're not really going to be attacking things for very long. They're going to be dead very, very quickly, so the notion that you need to damage their limbs is kind of silly. Extra damage resistance while reloading. With the way damage resistance works in Fallout 76, unless you don't have a lot of damage resistance to begin with, you're not getting a lot out of this, but if there's any time when having a little extra armor is beneficial, it's when you're vulnerable. And when you're most vulnerable is when you're reloading. You can't attack, you can't do anything, you can't sprint away. So having a little extra protection there is not a bad thing. So overall, love the first star. That definitely makes this a, a decent weapon at worst. Um, but uh, the second and third stars, not doing a whole lot for me. But overall, not a bad first roll. Let's see what's next. Now we've got a Gourmand's Plasma Pistol with Vat's Critical Shots doing more damage and extra agility. So the Gourmand's effect is an interesting one on paper, but in reality, it's a bit underwhelming. The idea of getting a damage boost for having full hunger and thirst meters is a smart one. I think that makes a lot of sense in this game. It gives you a reason to engage a little more with the hunger and thirst meters, which is good. Unfortunately, the execution is not great. Essentially, what you have here is a 24% damage boost if your hunger and thirst meters are both full. It's 12% each, so it's not that good. It's There's any number of effects that are going to give you a lot more damage than that. Aristocrats is a solid 50%. Junkies is 50%. Berserkers is 50%. Even Juggernauts is 25%, which isn't much, but it only requires you to do one thing. This requires you to do two, and it only gives you 24% total. So the idea that you're going to have it maxed out all the time, probably not. Interesting idea, but not really doing a whole lot in my opinion. Extra damage on Vat's critical hits is always a good thing, so if you want to run a plasma pistol and you don't have a good legendary one, something like this is definitely an improvement, but probably not where you want to live forever. A little extra agility, of course, is going to give you some more uh, AP for Vat's. Also nice, but not enough to make that a winner. And this one is also not a winner, sadly. Here we've got a Troubleshooter's double barrel with faster fire rate and extra damage resistance while aiming. So the Troubleshooter's effect of the many individual, individual creature type damage effects, Troubleshooter's is one of the more desirable ones, uh, simply because there are a lot of areas where you attack robots. You've got events that focus on robots, you've got nuke silos, You've got locations around the map that have lots of robots, so the idea that you're going to carry an extra weapon just for robots, or at least keep it in your stash, isn't totally crazy. Uh, unfortunately, the double barrel shotgun, probably not the best weapon for that, seeing as it needs to be reloaded every second shot. And that's the other downside here is 25% fi faster fire rate really doesn't do anything for you here. The double barrel shotgun already fires as fast as you can pull the trigger. It, uh, it just only fires twice, and then you have to reload. So faster reload, well, that might be a little more interesting here, but 25% faster fire rate, you're not getting anything out of that. Extra damage resistance while aiming, 
I guess maybe that's a thing, but realistically, I know for myself, I would be using this in vats or hip firing, so I'm not sure how much aiming down sights you're really going to do with a weapon like this. So, certainly not the best roll. Ouch. All right, Mama Mumbles, you're, you're giving me a rough day here. This one, again, is also not a great roll. Mutant Slayer's effect. Much like Troubleshooters, uh, one of the more desirable Slayer-type effects. Lots of areas of the map with Super Mutants, lots of events that involve Super Mutants, Daily Ops, etc. So, having a Mutant Slayer's weapon, again, not the worst idea in the world. Unfortunately, it's a single-action revolver. This thing takes forever and a day to reload, and it's just underpowered. All revolvers in this game seem to be underpowered, so that is uh, that is a pretty big disappointment. That's critical hits doing more damage. That's not a bad thing. If you're going to be rolling with a revolver, then chances are you're going to be a Vats crit focused build, so that's not a bad thing to have here. Damage resistance while reloading, while I'm still not a huge fan of it, if there's ever a weapon where it's beneficial, it's one like this that takes 10 years to reload. So, not a bad thing to have there, unfortunately. Seeing as it's a single action revolver, and it's an individual damage type weapon, I, I just don't see this being one that's going to be super desirable. Hopefully Mama Mumbles can do a little better for us today, let's see what she's got next. And now we've got a furious submachine gun with bashing damage and 90% reduced weight. So this one isn't bad. It really isn't. Uh, at least as far as the first star goes. The furious effect, you get additional damage with each consecutive hit on a target. An automatic weapon makes the most sense for furious. This is an automatic weapon. And it's also one that doesn't do exceptional damage per shot. So it's one that for most enemies, you're going to be putting multiple shots on the target. For bigger enemies, you're going to put a lot of shots on the target. So having something like this means you're going to be maxing out your Furious effect fairly regularly. So that's good. This is a good weapon for the Furious effect. Bashing damage as the second star is a great big who cares. Bashing damage is terrible. It's completely useless in every way. Unless you have a Shredding Barrel minigun, then it's pretty cool. Outside of that, it's completely worthless. 90% reduced weight. I like 90% reduced weight. Uh, I don't like that adding mods to a weapon essentially negates it. It only reduces the weight of the base weapon, not the mods. But the submachine gun is kind of a curious case because here we don't have any mods on it. Uh, everything is standard and it still weighs 4.9 pounds. That would mean if 90% would... If the weight had been reduced by 90%, if this was 10% of the weight, that would mean it would normally weigh 49 pounds? No, something's not right here. So, sadly, we don't get that much mileage out of the reduced weight effect here. It is a reduction over the standard weight of the weapon, but not much. So, uh, I guess it's better than nothing. I like the Furious effect. I'm a fan of the submachine gun. I think it's fun to use. It looks cool. It feels cool to use. Um, wish it had a better second star, but uh, other than that, not a terrible roll, not an amazing roll. Maybe something uh, for a, a mid-level player or a newer player can rock for a, you know a dozen or so levels until they until they upgrade to something better. All right, we're still waiting for something good, and yep, we're still waiting for something good. Here we've got an executioner's black powder pistol with limb damage and damage resistance while aiming. So number one, I'm not a fan of black powder weapons. Sorry, I'm not. I know there's an ammo glitch you can do and then you can fire them repeatedly over and over and over again. I know that exists. That's not how I play the game. So I, I like using things the way they're intended to be used and as the black powder weapon is intended to be used, it's just not very good. The reload time is simply too long. I like that it does a lot of damage per shot, that's good, but the fact that you can't be stealthy with it because it's loud and it takes so long to reload just makes it little more than a novelty, so that's a shame. The Executioner's effect here, not really what you're going for on a black powder weapon. I like the Executioner's effect on a lot of things, but a weapon like this, the goal is one shot, one kill. If my goal is to kill it in one shot, 
than getting extra damage on something that's below 40% health, well, that's not super helpful now, is it? So it's already going to be dead at that point. Extra limb damage again. We're trying to kill it in one shot. Does it really matter if I cripple its limb when I kill it? No. Let's move on. Ouch. Ouch. Mama Mumbles, what did I do to you? What did I do to you today? An exterminator's 10 millimeter pistol with the last shot effect, my one of my least favorite effects in the game, and extra agility. So here with the exterminator's effect, what we have is one of the least useful situational damage effects. Uh, extra damage against Meyer Lurks and Bugs. I actually like that effect on an armor piece because some of those things can do quite a bit of damage, but on a weapon, not as much. It's just not something that you go out of your way looking for. So I don't really see a case for keeping around a weapon for Meyer Lurks and Bugs. Made one thing when they had the old uh, vault raids where you went up against a lot of those things, then it kind of made sense. Doesn't really make sense now. The last shot effect is awful. It is a 25% chance to deal double damage with the last round in a magazine. Sounds okay on paper, right? Well, here's the thing. That's a one in four chance. So one in four, mag one in four magazines, you might do double damage. But on top of that, if you have a weapon like this, you are doing tactical reloads as you go. It's very rare that you're going to actually deplete your magazine. So... Are you really getting anything out of this? Not so much. Not in my opinion. Not a huge fan here. Extra agility does uh, lend itself well to pistols. So not a bad effect there. It's going to give you a little more AP and vats. It'll help you stay stealthier if you want to be stealthy. So there are some benefits to that. But the first two effects, unfortunately, are just not good. We've got a few more rolls to go. She's got to have something good for us in here today. I can feel it. I know it's coming. I just don't know when it's coming. So let's see here. What's next? Come on. Okay. All right. This is a little better. This is a little better. A vampire's lever action rifle with 25% damage while aiming and faster movement speed while aiming. Let's get the third star out of the way first. Faster movement speed while aiming. Nice idea on paper, but in reality, doesn't really do anything for most players. Once you've got, uh, once you're at a higher level and you've got mutations, you're probably going to have the speed demon mutation. And with that, you're already maxed out on your movement speed. So you're not getting anything extra out of that. At lower levels, when you don't have that, maybe it helps you a little bit. But in my experience, it's pretty insignificant. So it doesn't really help you a whole lot. Extra damage while aiming on a weapon like this is nice on a vampire's weapon. Um, simply because... Vampire's effect gives you health regeneration, but not any extra damage. So this gives you a damage buff while also keeping you alive. Now, you might use your lever action in vats a lot. And if you do, then you're not really getting anything out of that damage while aiming effect. But if you're using it as a sniper with a scope, then that's pretty useful. You're going to get a little damage buff. So that's not a bad way to go. It all depends how you use it. The vampire's effect... Not a huge fan on slower firing weapons because, uh, it, you know, if you want to really regenerate health, then you want to be hitting things a lot, but it's better than nothing. If you're a rifleman, it's definitely worth giving it a try. Your fire rate on a lever action isn't super slow, so it might be able to help you stay alive. Although if you're taking enough hits with a weapon like this, that it would matter, maybe you're already in trouble, I don't know, maybe I'm trying to make this better than it really is, but the weapon, uh, the effect combination of the first two stars is very good. The weapon itself, maybe not as much, but it was okay. This one is less okay. Mutant Slayer's combat rifle, extra vats hit chance, extra perception. So here, this one's not that bad. We already talked about how Mutant Slayer's is one of the better situational effects. There's a lot of scenarios where you know you're going to be killing super mutants. So if you're farming West Tech, if you are doing a super mutant daily op or an, uh, an event that involves super mutants, there's lots of ways that you can predict when you're going to encounter those enemies. So that's not a bad thing to have. Extra vats hit chance. I'm a big fan of this. Essentially, what this allows you to do is target enemy weak points from a much longer distance than you normally would. So you can reach out and hit those enemies from further away, which keeps you safe and gives you way more damage. So that 
is a really, really good effect. I love it. Extra perception doesn't hurt, uh, but the main benefit to it is that it increases your VATS accuracy. Our 50% VATS hit chance boost is doing way more than that, so I'd kind of like to see a different third star here. I'd also kind of like it not to be a combat rifle. I'd also kind of like it to have a more universal damage effect for the primary, but if you got a rocket combat rifle and maybe you're a commando build and you're just leveling up, this is something you might come across that could be very useful. All right, come on, Mama Mumbles. Give us something good. All right, now this is a little better. This is a little better. Okay, so still a combat rifle, not a fixer, not a handmade. Don't love that, but combat rifle is not bad. It's very similar to the fixer. It's got 20% less base damage than the fixer, but it's still pretty good. Uh, in the hands of a stealth commando build, it's going to be powerful no matter what. Bloodied effect, of course, still king of the hill when it comes to damage. I know there's people out there that just don't like bloodied. They just don't like the idea of it. I get it. Here's the deal. It does more damage than everything else. There's no avoiding that reality. So uh, whether you like it or not, it doesn't change the facts. And the fact is it does more damage than everything else. It has more things to synergize with. So it makes it a really, really effective legendary effect. 25% faster fire rates can improve your DPS overall. Always a good thing. Faster movement speed while aiming, like we talked about, not really getting anything out of that. But that first pair of effects, bloodied and faster fire rate, make this a very effective weapon. So combat rifle, not a fixer. So a little less damage overall. You don't get that extra stealth benefit. You don't get the extra movement speed while sneaking, which again, you don't get anyway because you already have speed demon. But uh, at least based on everything else we've gotten today, this is definitely a major improvement. So I think we've got uh, we've got one left. Let's see what else Mama Mumbles has for us. Come on. Ouch. Ouch. OK, so we've got a medic's light machine gun with extra vats hit chance and 250 damage resistance while reloading. So uh, a vampire's LMG, I would absolutely love. A medics, not so much. Extra vats hit chance, love it on a lot of weapons, not so much on this. Extra damage resistance while reloading again, we've talked about that at length. Chances are you're in power armor when you use this, you're really not getting a lot out of that. But the medics effect, it can be a good effect. Unfortunately, heavy guns, you're not usually relying a whole lot on vats. So are you going to get a lot of vats criticals that are going to heal you and your group? Probably not. With the VATS hit chance, maybe you retool some things, but overall, these effects just aren't a good fit for this weapon. I love the LMG. Uh, these just aren't a good fit for it. Unfortunately, doesn't look like we had a super productive day at the purveyor. One or two kind of interesting things, but mostly a lot of crap. Sometimes that's how it goes. That's why we go multiple times. You never know what you're going to get. We've had our lucky runs. Today just wasn't really one of them. The bloodied faster fire rate combat rifle is not bad, but overall uh, a pretty disappointing trip to the purveyor. With all that said, we found weapons. We talked about what makes them work, what makes them not work, and that's the whole reason we do these. It's not all about just seeing what we get. We want to we wanna see how the effects work and think about how they might be useful. So we were able to accomplish that at the very least. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please do go ahead hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, follow me on Twitter. There's always more to come on the channel. We've now got uh, usually two Fallout 76 streams a week with uh, custom world games and all kinds of stuff going on that you can participate in. So uh, make sure you hit the subscription button so that we can see you all next time. Till then, I'm Fisty McRib.